Lord, let your word go forth with power. Send the anointing upon this lump of clay. May I speak as an oracle of God. May I minister with your ability. Oh my God. Save a lost soul. Reclaim a backslider. Heal a sick person and strengthen the believers. Let hell tremble this morning. As heaven invade the forces of hell. And give victory to us we pray. In Jesus name. Amen. Be seated, please. Fully committed. Everybody say fully committed. Many years ago, we had a convention under that theme, fully committed Jesus all the way. Some of you still wear those t-shirts that were made exhibiting that theme for that particular convention. The text was read earlier from the book of Ruth chapter 1. And that story is really a family of fears. But we see in that story the commitment of one member of the family that would eventually transform the face of history. Can you say amen? amen? So the word commit, fully committed. The word commit, amen, has different, different definitions. And there's a large family of words which give various levels of definition to the word commit. Words such as committed, committing, commitment, Committable, 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 and committal. All that family of words, when you look on the various definitions, there are different levels and different applications. But this morning we want to talk about not committal, but committed. Everybody say fully committed. When I look in the scriptures, brothers and sisters, Amen. I see where many persons have given some real practical and personal demonstration to the word committed. Demonstration that, amen, boggles the mind even now when you think about it. Because to be fully committed means you are prepared for whatever the consequences are based on the decision that you have taken. My mind is made up and I won't turn back. Regardless of what the journey offers, what the journey affords, I am fully committed. Can you say amen? amen. When I look up the expression of uh, Jacob in Genesis chapter 32, from verse 24 through 28, I see a man there who stood resolute under a particular circumstance because he was fully committed to a process of transformation. Everybody say transformation. Fully committed to the process of transformation. In other words, Jacob has said to himself, enough of the foolishness of my life. Something is within me that God wants to bring to the fore. But before he brings it to the fore, some things must go. And whatever the things are that need to go, Jacob said, I have found myself at a place at a particular time when it becomes my curious moment when God is about to do something in me so that he can do some things through me, I am fully committed for whatever this angel has to offer, I am ready for it. If it's a wrestling match all night, I am committed. It doesn't matter if day is going to break with an angel in full view of everybody. I am committed for the long haul that will bring me transformation. Everybody say transformation. 
You got to know my brothers and sisters when you reach a point in your life when some things need to change. And whenever you reach that point and God Almighty by the Holy Spirit would have led you at a place, at a time to a person where change is imminent regardless of what the challenges are. You should say to yourself, I am committed to the change. Because one change is going to lead to other changes. Somebody praise him down there. Fully committed for the process of transformation. Anybody think you need some more transformation in your life? Anybody here think that you need God to give you another breakthrough that will take you to another level? Anybody feel down inside of you that there is something more that God wants to do for you so he can do some more things through you? Anybody here know that God wants to give you a supernatural breakthrough? And anybody here know that the devil is trying everything to keep you out of the transformation? My God Almighty, are you committed to the process? Are you fully committed to the process? Committed to the process of transformation. The angel said, come on, Jacob, you got to let me go. Jacob said, hey, ain't no letting go until. Oh, I feel I'm going to preach a little here today. Ain't no letting go until you bless me. Look at what God has in store for me. And I have been holding back myself. With my childish behavior. Amen. With my stupidity. With my wayward wanton living. I can't take this any longer. I'm committed to the process of transformation. Dear God Almighty, I would to God somebody in my audience today who know like you know, like you really know that God, amen, amen, wants to take you to that dimension. But some things are standing in your way. Some things are holding you back. I would to God you say to yourself this morning, no longer will I be held back by myself. I'm going to throw myself on the mercies of God. I'm going to throw myself at the hand and the feet of God and let him do to me. As it pleases him, lift your hand and say, have your own way, Lord. Hallelujah. So Joe, Jacob was fully committed to the process of transformation. But Daniel was fully committed to the process of preserving true religion. And not only to the process of preserving true religion, but committed to the process of proving the power of God and proclaim that there is only one true and living God. Somebody praise God here with me. Oh my God. Somebody wave your hands because I believe the Holy Ghost is going to touch down on somebody here. If you open up your heart and your spirit, God is going to touch down upon you here today. Like he has never touched down. Everybody say fully committed. Especially in this age and time, my brothers and sisters, amen, when so many religious practices are around about us and so many gods are being exemplified, it is time for the church of the living God to stand up. And I mean stand up bold. I mean stand upright. I mean stand on every corner, every front, every office, every community, every home, and stand up to preserve Amen. The integrity of true religion. Because without the true religion, man will not come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. False God cannot lead man to eternal life. Man made religion cannot lead individual to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Somebody praise him here. 
a young man named Shadrach, another one named Meshach, another man named Abednego. Amen. In the text of Daniel chapter 3, King said to them, we are going to play the music over again. And I'm giving you a second chance to bow down and to dance to the image, to pay homage to the statue that I have built. If you refuse to do so, then the fiery furnace will be heated seven times hotter and you'll be thrown in their bones. Hallelujah. The young men said, we heard you very well, your majesty. But we got an answer for you. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. But there is two things we know. One is that our God is able to deliver us. And two, if he choose not to deliver us because of divine providence, we are prepared to stand up and preserve the integrity of true religion. Can I say to this church today? Can I say to Jamaica today? Can I say to the world today? Don't bow to the devil. Don't bow to the devil's level. He's trying to bring everybody down, to trim us down, to take away our spirituality, to rob us of our holiness, to bring us like mere men. But in the name of Jesus, let the devil know you are fully committed to preserve true religion, to preserve holiness, to preserve righteousness, for righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach unto any people. Wave your hand and say, fully, 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 fully committed. Hallelujah. My God, I feel like preaching here. The man could have bowed to the devil to save their lives. But oh no. Wave your hand and say, oh no. Say, oh no, devil. We will not bow to your level. Say, oh no, devil. We will not bow to your level. Don't let them trim it on at the workplace. Don't let them tell you everybody is doing it. So what are you playing? Don't let them trim it on in the colleges and the high schools and the universities. Don't let them tell you everybody's doing it. Tell them the devil is a liar. There are three Hebrew men and women. There are a few in Zion, a few in Sardis who will not defile their garment. They're going to stand up for holiness. Hallelujah. Not everybody will become lesbians. Not every woman will become lesbian. Not every man will become homosexual. Not everyone will become bisexual. Not everybody will become mobile workers. Not everybody will become idol worshippers. Not everybody will be liars and thieves and murderers. Somebody is going to stand up in the midst of the mess and present a message that Jesus Christ is Lord. Stand in your mess wherever the mess is and be a message to the nation that I'm committed to preserve true religion. I am committed to see the manifestation of the power of God. Committed to let Nebuchadnezzar and declare did we not throw three men bound in the fire? But when I take a second look, I see a fourth man. If somebody, you, some of you could look in the spirit, you would see the fourth man walking in this house today. You would see the fourth man sitting beside you. You would see the fourth man stretching out his hand upon your raging tempest saying peace be still Malo Shakota somebody better praise God like you're in church when it was over the king declared in all the provinces 
of Babylon. Let it be proclaimed that as of this moment, only one God should be served. The God of Shadrach, the God of Meshach, the God of Abednego. Mm. Fully committed to the process of preserving true religion and to prove and to proclaim the power of the one true and living God. Lift your hand and say, one God. Jehovah God. Dear God. Somebody say something here. Another example of person fully committed. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 through 19 the prophet said I am fully committed to serve God at all times under all circumstances regardless of what it costs I'm fully committed because they said if the fig tree doesn't blossom if no fruit is in the vine if the labor of the holly fail if the flock heal no meat if the herd be cut off from the stall. Lord, I'm preaching to somebody here. Church of the living God, power of faith ministries, Christians everywhere. Are you fully committed to serve God under every and any circumstance? No, Bishop, you don't really mean that. Oh, yeah. I mean it from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Are you not saying nothing there? Are you fully committed to serve God regardless of the price you have to pay? Fully, fully committed under every circumstance at all times. To stand up for the master. Yeah. Made my choice forever. To walk with Christ my Lord. Not from him my soul can sever. While I trust him at his word. Lift your hand again and say fully committed. Let me give you one more and I get to the text for a few minutes. Acts chapter 20 verses 22 through 32 that famous text there when you rockled and stirred up on the ocean. But Paul said, I am fully committed to proclaim the gospel and also to suffer the consequences. Acts chapter 20 rather. Amen. When he says, I'm going to Jerusalem. I don't fear nothing that is going to befall me down there. I know the Holy Ghost has borne witness. That bonds and affliction is awaiting me down there but none of these things somebody wave your hand in the devil's face and say none of these things if you really mean it wave your hand down low and say none of these things <laughs> oh god almighty hallelujah i'm fully committed paul said to preach the gospel regardless of what i have to suffer for the gospel's sake Sometimes you got to suffer loneliness. Sometimes you got to suffer hunger and thirst and nakedness and rejection and hatred, criticism, persecution. You are back bitten by many people. You are frowned upon. In time you've got to suffer loss of employment. God, am I preaching here? Because you stand up for Jesus on the job. Some people just don't want to see you take your stand. And they talk against you. They carry name and bad news and tell lies on you. And some of you have been wrongly dismissed from your job. It's because of your faith in Jesus Christ. You are paying a price. Fully committed going to Jerusalem. 
not fearing the thing that shall befall me there. And I know what the Holy Ghost has said. Bonds and affliction is awaiting you down there. But none of these things. Any day we reach that point in our Christian life where we declare and are determined to stand up on those declarations, nobody backslide. You didn't hear that? Any day we make those declarations and are willing to stand up and back them with faith in God, nobody backslide. No whole boyfriend can get you backslide because he can't get you back in a bed. No Jerry and nephew can't get you backslide because him can't get you back in the bar. God Almighty. No lotto can get you backslide because you're not joining the lotto line. And some of you are acting like Hayab, you know. Hayab was going to a battle to fight and he disguised himself because he did not want them to recognize him as King Hayab lest they, they wound him or kill him. So he disguised himself. Some Christians are disguising themselves when they are joining the latter line, disguising themselves when they are going to certain places. You better let me preach in this house today. But you cannot hide from God. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. I don't care what kind of camouflage you put on. I don't care what kind of wig you put on. That's why some of you are so much wig. Black wig, yellow wig, pink wig, blue wig, gray wig, all kind of wig. You change up yourself and some of all kind of camouflage color. But in the name of Jesus Christ, shake out of that. Come in at this. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing. I'm going to Jerusalem. Somebody shout and praise God in this house. Woo! Hey! Uh. I hate the ladies with your wigs. But you don't know some men are false beard. They hide them, you don't see them, but when they're going to do the tricks, they put on the false beard. And all who never wear felt hat have on felt hat of them head, covering down them head because they're hiding. All those who never wear braces put on braces because they want to disguise themselves. But in the name of Jesus, let heaven know that you are real. Stand up when you need to stand. Stand up where you need to stand as a true soldier of Jesus Christ, fully committed. Hunger or no hunger, fully committed. Loneliness or no loneliness, fully committed. Husband or no husband, wife or no wife, money or no money, friends or no friends, pulpit or no pulpit, fully, 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 fully. Somebody praise God here. Yeah. Woo! Mm. So today, today, you are not a Jacob, but you need a transformation. So you need to commit to receive it. You're not a Shadrach, Meshach, nor a Bednego, but you need to preserve the integrity of true religion. You need to stand. You're not an abacock, my brothers and sisters. You got food in your house. You got shoes on your feet. You got food on your table. You got shelter over your head. But you too need to serve him. Under all circumstance. You're not a Paul. You're not commissioned to go into Jerusalem. 
And the prophecies have not been made against you concerning your suffering. But you're a witness for Jesus Christ. You are a messenger of God. You also need to stand. Tell your neighbor, stand. So in the text of Ruth chapter 1, 15 minutes, we see one family. Everybody say one family. What a narrative it is in that book. One family of six persons soon became a family of five. Soon became a family of three. Soon became a family of two. Soon became a family where one has to stand to defend herself. Oh God Almighty. Some of you are hearing me here this morning and wherever, whenever. Hey, man, you're part of a family, a nucleus of a family, a nuclear family, extended family, whatever family. And you, some of you have witnessed the disintegration of your family. You have witnessed different values that have crept into your family. You have witnessed some things that have eroded your real true family principles. I mean core principles. You have seen them. Some of you might have seen some of your siblings turn Rastafari. Turn drug pushers. Can I preach to anybody here? Ends up in a life of crime and violence. Some of you might have seen your sisters walking the broad road that leads to destruction. Living night type kinds of lives. You'd have seen relatives gone to hope your man. Looking for other gods. Am I preaching to anybody? One family. You'd have seen some boys turned homosexuals. Girls turned lesbians. And the sad thing about it, some of them were brought up in the very church. You'd have seen divorce among your siblings. Even divorce among your parents. You would have seen family values trodden to the ground. And somebody said to you, how are you going to continue this good old way? Do you not see that everything has fallen apart? You better go back to another life and abandon this life. Oh God Almighty, a family disintegrates before her very eyes under different circumstances. But there was one member of the family that decided I'm going to make a difference because God is with me. And I'm fully committed. So it was a famine that forced this family out of their Israeli home to the country of Moab, a famine. And soon after, the husband died, and wife and was left alone with her two sons. And after a while, the boys got married, and within 10 years, their wives died. And this woman was left with two with her daughters-in-law and herself in a strange land. Look at the dilemma that they now face. Three struggling women. God Almighty. Are you still with me there? Morning, how do we make it? With her daughters and mother-in-law, all with it. Still hoping for the best. Living in a strange land. Some of you feel like you're in a strange land, although you're among your king folks. Because their values are not your values. Their vision is not your vision. They do not share your vision. Are you not with me there? Naomi decided, I'm going to move on. But Ruth, offer, you've got to go back. Don't follow me, girls. It makes no sense you follow me. The future ahead of you is very bleak. It is dark. It is dismal. No husband, no future for you. Why don't you make the choice and go back? I will journey on to Bethlehem, Judah. I'm going to Bethlehem, Judah. 
But you may go back to the land of your parents. Go back to your parents and your father's house. Go back to Moab. You may find a better life there, young ladies. Hofer came. She heard just what Ruth heard. Both heard the same story. The same gloomy picture. An offer came and she kissed her mother-in-law and said, yes, I'm going back. Before I go further, what more have you heard of offer after that departure from Ruth? Tell me what more you heard of her. Absolutely nothing. She went back. Offer made her choice. Hear what Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. And Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 25 says. It says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the hand thereof, the ways of death. It seemed right in offers physical eyes. When she rationalized the thing, having heard what her mother-in-law said. But hear me well. It's one thing to hear from the heart of an individual. It's another thing to hear from the heart of God. It's one thing to hear what your friends have to say concerning the dilemma you are going through. It's another thing to hear what God has to say. About what you're going through. Because most time. God's side of the story. Is completely different. To other people's side. She made her choice. And she went back. But Ruth said no. I'm not going back. I am fully committed. I must preserve my heritage. Somebody praise God here. The famous verse of that chapter says, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following you. Anywhere you go, I'll go. Where you live, I live. Where you die, I die. Where they bury you, that's where I want to be buried. God, do so to me and more. If anything but death separates me and thee. And when Naomi heard those words from the lips of Ruth, the Bible says she stopped speaking to her. Are you with me over here? Are you with me all around here? When she heard the conviction and the commitment of this young widowed girl, she said, you know what? I better leave her alone. Your friends, your colleagues, your relatives, your associates, they must recognize that it's time now for them to stop. Because you have crossed over the line. Your whole boyfriend must recognize it's now time that he stops. And don't call your phone anymore. Because the calls are not welcome. You are not being a snob. But they are not welcome. Are you not saying nothing? Your girlfriend of the past must recognize the very same. Your partners in crime of the past life. Must not realize that any man being Christ. Is a new creature. They must realize that all things are passed away. And behold, wave your hand and say, all things come new. Preaching to somebody here. When she heard the words from the young lady, immediately she stopped speaking. It made no sense I try to discourage her anymore. It makes no sense I try to dissuade her from following me. 
it makes no sense I try to persuade her to follow her sister-in-law this girl is fully persuaded Christian Christian coming down all of us have choices to make as we traverse the course of her earth the life. Amen. Question is, what choice do you make? And how you did how do you deal with the great challenges that faced you from day to day on your Christian journey? How do you deal with the challenges of your life? Where well, Bishop, I don't have any, where you are dead. How do you deal with the challenges? How do you deal with the financial challenges that face you? On a daily basis. As a single mother. As a single woman. As a single brother, single man. One income, one salary. Bills are piling up. Oh, do you deal with your financial challenges? Do you stand up in your integrity as a child of God? Oh, God Almighty. Or do you seek assistance from some sources that are not wholesome, that are not right? How do you deal with them? When a man comes along and he flips his bill for all his wallet and he shows you all he can do for you, that minute, I can pay all of your bills. I can pay your rent. can even buy you a car. I can take you uptown and downtown. How you deal with that challenge? Do you have enough of God inside of you? Oh my God, I feel I'm preaching here. Do you have enough of God inside of you when the devil shows you the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, all oh, these will I give you if you just do one thing. I'm not asking you for four, five, six things. Just do one thing and all these shall be yours. Hallelujah. Do you have enough God inside of you to say, entreat me not to leave him, not to return from following him. I am fully committed. Jesus Christ all the way. How do you deal with it? The financial challenges that are so real. How do you deal with the spiritual challenges? When some other church people, other church people, bombard you left, right and center. And they tell you, you don't have to live that holy. Not even your bishop living holy. You think Bishop not do a little thing on the side? Come on. The devil is a liar. When them bombard you and tell you that you don't have to be so straight. You don't have to be so rigid with this Christian walk. You can do a little thing now and then. Nothing is wrong to go to party on a Saturday night and come teach a Sunday school on a Sunday morning. And nothing wrong to go on a Friday night and take your Sabbath school on a Sabbath morning. Many people are doing it. I am still playing my organ. I'm still singing on the choir. I'm still preaching. I'm still teaching. I'm still doing all of that. And do you not see how I'm enjoying my life? The devil is a liar. Don't bow to the devil's level. If I perish, I perish. But I must see the king. Somebody praise God like you're in church. Let me bring it down. How do you 
to deal with that spiritual challenges when you don't have to dress like all you dress you don't have to give tithes and offering you don't have to go to fasting service you don't have to be denying yourself of this and that and the other come on Christianity don't mash you up enjoy yourself brother enjoy yourself sister and walking some of your streets and avenues and lanes and boulevard and pathway and circles and clothes right now. How do you deal with it? Oh, Lord, somebody wave your hand. At Come on, wave your hand and say something. Wave your hand and say something. Wave your hand and say something in this house. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Close. Close. Fully committed. How do you deal with the marital challenges? Marital challenges. When you go to work on a Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, there's a slick guy there who is so light tongued. And a slick lady there who is so warm. Oh, she's so understanding. She's so caring. She says, says the right words you want to hear. She understands you so well. And that grumpy wife at home could pay no mind and no attention. She's so grumpy. She's so miserable. And that old husband is so tormenting and perplexing. How do you deal with that marital challenge? When you have somebody with padded arms ready to hold you. How do you deal with it? Do you fall in the devil's trap? But why some of you looking at me like that? Because I'm preaching so straight and so strong. You don't know that every time you face a marital challenge as a man, there's a woman there too. Especially if you're a sissy man that shot everything. We're going in at your house. Excuse me, please. You don't know every time you face serious marital challenges as a hurting wife and you speak speak it at the workplace to the men around you you don't know that someone is there to empathize with you and to sing some Percy Sledge songs for you Jesus and you feel I don't want to go back home oh no I don't want to go back home Every married person, lift your hand and say, I'm going back home. Come on. you don't mean you have problems. Just say, I'm going back home. Come on. It don't mean you're, oh no, it doesn't mean you're having challenge. Financial challenges, marital challenges, spiritual challenges. How do you deal with them? Root stood at that crossroad. Finally, I close. I got to close. How do you deal with the social challenges of your life when you are invited to go here and to go there because you work at a certain place and this will be happening and that will be happening and oh, you will be missed. Don't be a misfit. Come on, you will not get in trouble. You won't get in any trouble at all. How do you deal with the pressure of the social challenges that you face on a daily basis? Lift your hand and say, I'm working for a reward. And this is where I close. Reward. Ruth said, I'm not going back. God has better things in store for me. 
There's a reward awaiting me. And young men, young ladies, mothers and fathers, grandparents all, when you make a decision to stand up for God and you stand up for God, he is going to reward you. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to reward. He will not forget your labor of love that you have showed towards his name. Somebody praise God here. Well, I, I say this, I'm not preaching to people who don't, who don't mean well. You're not preaching to people who mean well. I want to pick up broken pieces and scale hot most high. Somebody say something here. Rewards. Reward is coming. At the end of Ruth's journey. Rewards number one. She was able to glean in the fields of Boaz. The wealthiest man of his time in that town and city. And when she entered the field, Boaz said to the man, Make sure you leave grains and fulls of grains so that she can pick them up easily. And make sure you don't touch her. Something is special about this woman. Don't touch her, man. I know all of you guys will be looking her from head to toes. Taking first, second, third, and fourth look. Don't look, but don't touch. Don't touch. That's reward number one. Gleaned in the fields of Boaz. Reward number two. Became Boaz's wife. Married to the wealthy man. Are you not saying nothing? What have you heard of Orpha who turned back? Say it, Naman. Okay. So if something worthwhile is going to be said of you and me and all of us, you have to go all the way. Reward number three. Not only that, she was able to glean in the fields of Boaz and became Boaz's wife, but she was exalted to the royal lineage, having married to Boaz. Somebody say something here. Look what God had in store. And not only that, finally, when she gave birth to her son, my God, what's his name? Obed or Obed? When she gave birth to Obed, he was the grandfather of King David, right in the royal line, fully committed. Work for your reward. Don't turn back. God has greater things ahead of you than you have left behind you. What have you heard of Orpha who turned back? Nothing. And you're fully committed. God will bless you. Stand with me, everybody. You preach too long. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Come on. Oh, God. I thought the Holy Ghost was ministering to anybody here in this word. challenge from the Lord today out of this message and you want to make a response to the Holy Ghost you know what to do I won't tell you where to come you know where to come but that's what the altar is for <laughs> oh my God oh my God Give me the same song, Minister Brian, learning to lean. Play it in the background. Because that's where we're going to get our strength. That's where we're going to get some power. My God Almighty. Come a little closer. Many others are coming down. Hundreds are drawing down. For what reason? Only you and God knows. Allah ba'sheko musiti. 
fully committed. Yeah. Come on, church. This is your day to get an injection, an injection from the Holy Ghost. Oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> my God, look at what is in store. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has never entered into the heart of man. The things that God prepare for them that love Him. Take something. Take an anointing. Take some courage. Take some more grace. Receive some more strength. Take some more wisdom. Yes, brother Dixon, take all you can, brother. It is here for the taking. It is here for the taking. Yes, sir. Give it to him, Jesus. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Give it. Yes, yes, yes. Receive the Holy Ghost. Somebody reach out for something. Yeah. Come on, prayer warrior. Bring him true. Bring him true. The man is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Shaba Baba Setia. Take something. No empty basket. Leaving this house today. No empty shopping bags. No empty trolley. God Almighty, and our Koshaba who sent it. Oh, Jesus, my God, my God, Ramama Shiko Tose, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Take it. Fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. Fill up your courage. Fill up with strength. Fill up. Fill up. Everybody lift up your hands in his presence. Forget that anybody is standing around you. And get crazy for Jesus. And take something from him. He wants to give you a deposit. In Jesus name. Lord, my God Almighty, oh, I am learning. Oh, oh God, oh God, oh God. from the depths of your heart, I'm learning. Come on, choir, take something more. I'm learning, I'm learning to leave. Learning, By the power of God, I speak in your life. I speak in your life. I speak in your life. Receive the Holy Ghost.
Christ calling me fully committed to preserve true religion fully committed to serve you under any circumstance fully committed to the process of transformation fully fully committed dear God Almighty dear God lift up your hands and cry out one more time out and take all that is yours in the name of Jesus reach out and take all that's yours the package from heaven sent for you are you ha. my God hey yo no no Santa Woo! yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes Yes! Shekondobo Sata! Malo! Shekondobo Sata! Receive the Holy Ghost! Hey, ba, 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 sata. Yes, 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 yes! Somebody go for it! Shatokobo Senda! Rotobo Shie! Woo! Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. My God! There is a touchdown. There is a touchdown. There is a touchdown. Woo! Take, 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 take. Take all that you can. Take all that you can. Take all that you can. Take it. Shatoko Boshana. Rabba Boshanaya. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, take the power to run this race, take the power to stay in the race. Oh! In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. No giving up, no turning back, no letting up, no surrendering to the devil. Jesus, by the power of the Almighty God, I speak the release for you. My God Almighty, oh yeah, oh, my God, my God.
glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. That's where the power lies. Yes, I'm learning to leave. I'm learning to leave. I am learning to leave on Jesus. I am finding more power. Power, power. I am learning to lead on Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Je oh my God, Jesus, 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 somebody need you. Lord, Shut up, oh, Satan. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Eyo kosha baba ha. Shonda. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah. 